I'm married, I, or I married my husband in 2007. Neither of us were saved. I later, later gave my life to the Lord, and he has not. Our marriage has encountered some difficulties, and we separated in 2009. We reconciled in 2010. Now my husband is asking for another separation. Previously, I prayed for my marriage, but now I'm confused. Is it God's will for my, for my marriage to continue since my husband still is not saved? I do pray for, for his salvation regardless, but how do I know if my marriage is God's will? This has caused me so much confusion lately, and now I'm questioning if all the times I believed God was speaking a word to me might have been my mind or my imagination working overtime. I'm so stressed because I truly want to be in God's will. And I will uh, let this marriage go without a prayer if it's not God's will. So how do I know? This is a great question. Tammy, you're right. The Bible tells us before we're married, he tells believers, be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. What, righteous, what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness and so forth. Let me sound this warning loud and clear for young people who want to get married. Maybe you don't want to get married right now. You just want to have a boyfriend or girlfriend. I want to sound this loud. I want to sound this clear. If you are a believer in Jesus, meaning you are a born-again believer, you have absolutely no stinking business, not one shred of business, okay? Not one little iota of business dating an unsaved guy or girl. They could be religious, but another religion. If you're a believer, you have no business dating him. And I absolutely no business marrying them. Now, sometimes folks get married before they get saved, and one spouse gets saved. Now what? Well, the Bible does give us an idea of when it is okay to get divorced and when it is okay uh, not to. There are two options given that would allow for divorce and remarriage. Now, again, folks can choose to get divorced, and that's true. But if you get divorced without one of these two, biblically speaking, you're not supposed to get remarried. So if you're getting divorced with the idea of saying, you know what, I want to find somebody else, I want to try again, here are the two things that one of two has to happen. One, if your spouse cheats on you. Let's listen to what the Bible says. Matthew chapter 19, verse 3. The Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him, and say, saying unto him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? They're asking him, Hey, can we get divorced for any reason? And he answered and said to them, Have ye not read? But he which made them at the beginning made them male and female, and said, For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. Wherefore, they are no more twain, but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. They say unto him, Why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement to put her away? He saith unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, suffered you to put away your wives. But from the beginning, it was not so. And I say unto you, 
whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another committeth adultery. But whosoever marrieth her, which is put away, doth commit adultery. So, the Bible says, God hates divorce. But he allows, because of the hardness of man's heart, for divorce and remarriage if the spouse has chosen not to keep their marriage vow and not to be faithful. If they commit uh, ad adultery or fornication, sex outside of marriage, yes. Number two, if your un unbelieving spouse leaves you because of your belief, Okay, so it says, if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. A brother or sister is not under bondage in such cases, but God has called us to peace. For what knowest thou, O wife, whether thou shalt save thy husband? Or how knowest thou, O man, whether thou shalt save thy wife? It's possible they'll get saved. But if they, if they walk away, then let them walk away. The Bible says, Art thou bound to a wife? Seek not to be loosed. Art thou loosed from a wife? Talking about if she walks away because she is an unbeliever. Seek not a wife. But, and if thou marry, thou hast not sinned. And if a virgin marry, she had not sinned. So, if the unbeliever walks away because of your belief, yeah, you're set, you're, you're free. Now, in your situation, you don't need to be confused. If he's walking away because of his unbelief and your belief, yeah, you're free. But what's your role? Is your role to walk away? Absolutely not. In fact, the Bible says that you can submit to him and you may win him through your actions. Look at this. Second Peter chapter 3 and verse 1. Likewise, you wives, be in subjection to your own husbands. If any obey not the word, they may also without the word be won by the conversation of the wives while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear. So stay with him. Love him. God will use that. We just had a lady in our church pray for her unsaved husband for 20 years, and he got saved. Yes, it's true. We're told not to uh, yoke with unbelievers. but And that's how we avoid this heartache in the first place. But marriage is a commitment. Once you marry, you're in it for life, except for two reasons. Your spouse cheats on you, or he leaves you because you're a believer and he's an unbeliever. Now, that's the answer to my to this question questioner. I want to tell you something. Can I uh, let you folks that are watching for a minute in on something? I've been involved. In, um, oh goodness, I've been marriage counseling quite a bit. I'd probably say in the last year, probably 10 couples. I think the first thing that we need to understand, couples come to me and they'll say, I don't feel it anymore. I guess it's time to get divorced. They'll say, uh, I'm just too tired. I just want to start again. Or they'll say, listen, he doesn't treat me right. He doesn't deserve me. She doesn't treat me right. She doesn't deserve me. Hang on and hold the phone. Let's figure out what marriage is, okay? The Bible gives us a picture in the Old Testament Malachi chapter 2 and verse 14, it says, 
Yet ye say, Wherefore? Because the Lord hath been a witness between thee and the wife of thy youth, against whom thou hast dealt treacherously. Yet she is thy companion. Listen. And the wife of thy covenant. Friends, listen to me. It doesn't matter where you got married, justice of the peace or in church. You're in a covenant. You made a promise till death to you part. Like I said to this lady, there are only two ways to get you out of that. 90% of marriages would be fixed if you just realize you don't stink and have an option here. You might as well make it work. There's a bunch of holeless bolus out there that where people would say, well, uh, God, I'm unhappy and God doesn't want me to be unhappy. That's right. Get right with God. Get right with your spouse and you'll be plenty happy. But listen to me. Do not use your unhappiness as an excuse to break a vow you made before God and man. That's the deal. We got folks that for the drop of the hat will, will break their marriage covenant. Listen to me. If you're having a hard time living with each other, you have an emergency, you need to get counseling, you need to get in, first of all, get your face in church, Sunday school, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, and every time the cotton picking doors are open, you have an emergency in your home, you need to get that fixed. You don't just wring your hands and say, well, I tried, I guess there's nothing I can do, it's not going to work. Listen to me, you made a commitment for the rest of your life, you make it work. Now, Oh, God doesn't want me to be miserable. You know what? God would rather have you miserable and together than relieved of your burden and separated and break your vow. Believe it. But you don't have to be miserable. What you have to be is right with God. If you're right with God, you won't be miserable. You can work through these things. You get with your pastor and you get in the word and you and you start to confess some of the sins that you've been holding together as a, as a, as as a couple. And I'll tell you what, it'll change you.